Hey there, internet screen zombies. Welcome to another episode of Why Your Brain Hates You. Today we're diving deep into the world of brain rot. No, not the zombie apocalypse kind, although sometimes it feels pretty close. We're talking about the slow, insidious decay of your mental faculties, courtesy of our modern digital lifestyle. Buckle up, because this ride might just make you want to throw your phone out the window. Picture this. You wake up, bleary-eyed, and the first thing you do is reach for your phone. Just a quick check, you tell yourself. Three hours later, you're still in bed, thumb sore from scrolling, having absorbed approximately zero useful information. Congratulations. You've just experienced your first brain rot of the day. But don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. Let's break down what's actually happening in that mushy thing between your ears. Your brain, that magnificent supercomputer capable of creating symphonies and solving complex equations, is being reduced to a glorified like button. Every time you scroll past a post, your brain gets a tiny hit of dopamine. It's like a slot machine for your mind, except instead of coins, you're gambling away your attention span and critical thinking skills. But wait, there's more. Remember when you could read a book without checking your phone every five minutes? Yeah, me neither. That's because our constant exposure to bite-sized content is rewiring our brains. We're training ourselves to have the attention span of a goldfish with ADHD. Long-form content? Who has time for that when there are cat videos to watch? Now let's talk about the social aspect of this digital brain decay. Social media promised to connect us, but instead, it's turned us into a bunch of socially awkward penguins who can't hold a conversation without checking our notifications. We're more connected than ever, yet somehow lonelier. It's like being at a party where everyone's shouting into their phones instead of talking to each other. Fun times, right? And don't even get me started on the echo chambers. Remember when we used to engage with different opinions and have actual debates? Now our algorithms make sure we only see content that confirms our existing beliefs. It's like intellectual inbreeding, and the results are about as pretty as you'd expect. But hey, at least we're informed, right? Wrong. We're drowning in a sea of information but most of it is about as nutritious for our brains as a diet of pure sugar is for our bodies. We know more about celebrity breakups than we do about world events. We can name every TikTok dance trend but can't locate countries on a map. It's like we're filling our brains with mental junk food and wondering why we can't think straight. Let's not forget the impact on our creativity. Remember when being bored meant you had to use your imagination? Now, the moment we feel a hint of boredom, we reach for our phones. We're outsourcing our creativity to apps and filters. Why come up with an original thought when you can just repost a meme, right? And productivity? Ha! Huh. That's a good one. We've all been there. You sit down to work, and suddenly it's vital that you know what your third grade teacher is up to on Facebook. Or you convince yourself that watching just one more YouTube video will somehow make you more productive. Spoiler alert, it won't. But wait, there's a twist in our tale of digital doom and gloom. It turns out that all this brain rot might actually be... evolving us? Hear me out. While we're losing some skills, we're gaining others. We're becoming masters of multitasking, even if science says that's not really a thing. We can process vast amounts of information quickly, even if we forget it just as fast. And we've developed an uncanny ability to communicate in GIFs and emojis. Future archeologists will have a field day deciphering our hieroglyphs of dancing ladies and eggplants. So what's the solution to this cerebral meltdown? Cold turkey? Throwing our devices into the sea? Living in a cave? Tempting, but probably not practical. Instead, we need to start treating our brains like the precious organs they are. Just as we, hopefully, wouldn't subsist on a diet of pure junk food, we need to start feeding our minds a more balanced diet. Here's a radical idea. Set aside some time each day to do absolutely nothing. No phone, no TV, no stimulation. Just you and your thoughts. It might feel uncomfortable at first, like mental detox, but stick with it. You might be surprised at what your brain comes up with when it's not being bombarded with content. Try reading a book, a physical one with pages and everything. Start small if you need to, maybe a pamphlet or the back of a cereal box. Work your way up to a full novel. Your attention span will thank you. Engage in real conversations with actual humans, face to face. I know, terrifying, right? But trust me, it's worth it. You might discover that people are much more interesting when they're not limited to a 280 character limit. And here's a really wild suggestion. Create something. Anything. Write a story, draw a picture, compose a song. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be yours. Flex those creative muscles before they atrophy completely. As for social media, I'm not saying quit cold turkey. Unless you want to, in which case go for it. 
but maybe try a digital diet. Set specific times for checking your feeds and stick to them. Use tools to limit your screen time. And for the love of all that is holy, turn off those notifications. Your brain doesn't need to know every time someone likes your post. Remember, your brain is plastic, and I don't mean it's made of recycled water bottles. It's adaptable. Just as we've trained our brains to crave constant stimulation, we can train them to enjoy deeper, more meaningful engagement with the world around us. So the next time you find yourself mindlessly scrolling at 2 a.m., ask yourself, is this really how I want to use this incredible supercomputer in my skull? Or do I want to use it to create, to connect, to truly experience the world around me? The choice is yours. Your brain is counting on you. Don't let it rot. Instead, let it flourish. Who knows? You might just rediscover the joy of thinking for yourself. And in a world of digital zombies, that's a superpower worth having. Remember, folks, your brain is a terrible thing to waste, especially on cat videos and political memes. Use it wisely, feed it well, and for goodness sake, give it a break once in a while. Your future self will thank you, if it can remember how to form coherent thoughts, that is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go stare at a wall for a while. My brain cells are begging for a holiday. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and maybe, just maybe, put down that phone once in a while. Your brain will thank you, probably not in emojis, but hey, that's progress.